Welcome to Animals of the Bible. This week on Animals of the Bible, we're going to talk about a dove. All right, everyone, I have a challenge for you, a Bible study challenge that will go along with our virtual lessons this fall for 2020. If you complete 50%, that's half of all of the virtual Bible study lessons in the yellow folder, and you bring your folder in December and show me your completed work, you will get to go on a trip to Branson, to the Butterfly Palace, and the Fun Zone Pizza Ranch and Arcade. And so it'll be a really fun trip. Charla and I will be going, and we will only take the kids that complete 50% of their virtual Bible study lessons in the yellow folder. So open up your folder, and you have to complete the lesson um, Bible study journal part and the coloring pages for that week to um, have it count. So good luck. Get out your Bible study journal and open to the page that's dated 91620. The scripture that we'll be reading today is Genesis chapter 7 verses 21 through chapter 8 verses 17. While you're listening to the Bible lesson, I want you to draw a picture of this lesson in this space. You'll notice here that it says, who wrote these verses? God told Moses what to write. So now check out this verse in the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So now that we know that Moses wrote this because God told him what to write, let's see whom it was written to. And it was written to everyone, so you could even draw a picture of yourself there. Then it says, what are some of the key words in this passage? So while you listen to the Bible lesson, you're going to write down some key words that you hear. I heard ark, Noah, flood, God's promise. You can also draw those out. And then it says, write at least one question you have about this passage. I wrote, why did God destroy the entire world? Welcome to our Wednesday night lesson. Tonight we're going to be reading about Noah. And you may remember we studied this just a few Sundays ago at church, but this time we're going to talk a little bit more about the latter part of the story. So we're going to be reading from chapter 7, verse 24 of Genesis through chapter 8, verse 17. So let's read it together. Open your Bibles. The flood waters flooded the earth for 150 days. That's a long time. But God remembered Noah and all of the wild animals and livestock that were with him on the ark. And he sent a wind over the whole earth and the waters receded. Receded means that they went away to make land. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. We know from earlier in chapter 7 that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, but the flood lasted on the earth for 150 days. The water receded steadily, so it went away steadily from the earth. And at the end of 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Our mountains are called different things now, so we're not really sure where the mountains of Ararat is, but many people have theories about where the ark may have landed. The waters continued to recede until the 10th month. And on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains had become visible. So we can see here that from the 7th to the 10th month, the ark had to, they had to stay in the ark. So that's three months from the time that the ark rested on the top of the mountain from the time that the mountains truly became visible. That's quite a long time. After 40 days, Noah opened a window that he had made in the ark and he sent out a raven. And it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove. So this is our animal of the day that we're talking about to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could not find any place 
to set its feet because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. So the dove needs like a branch or something to land on and there was nothing. He waited seven more days and again set the dove out from the ark. The dove returned to him in the evening and there in his beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Olive leaf is from a tree, olive tree. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth and he waited seven more days and sent out the dove again. But this time the dove did not return, meaning that the dove was like, hey, I found someplace else to live. <laughs> I no longer willing to live in this crazy crowded ark. By the first day of the first month of Noah's 600th year, that's right, Noah was 600 years old. So for some reason in the Old Testament and Genesis, people lived a lot longer than they do now. So that's really interesting fact, but it's not just Noah, it talks about their age. All through the book of Genesis, it talks about people being 300, 400, and it gives their name and how old they were when they passed away. So for some reason, people were healthier and were allowed to live longer than we are now. So the average age now, I believe, is 70 to 80. Some people live more than that and some people live less. So that's the average. So we live a lot shorter of an amount of time on earth than Noah did. 600 years, whoa. <laughs> I bet he had lots of gray hair. <laughs> Noah then removed the covering from the ark and the water had dried up from the earth. And he saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your wives, and bring every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase the number on it. So we can see here that Noah was finally let out of the ark. So I want to remind you of a few things that Noah, he um, was the only righteous person on earth. And so God told him way ahead of time, a year ahead of time, he said, I'm going to destroy the earth because there is nobody that follows God. So there was nobody but Noah and his family that follow God. So that would be like, your family is the only family that reads their Bible and prays and believes in God and the whole world. And so the world was a really rotten place at that point in time. And so God decided to destroy the earth with a flood. Um, many Bible scholars believe that it never rained before then because um, the people, you know, they'd never seen floods before like this. And also it says that the um, waters from below came up. So not only did it rain for 40 days and 40 nights, but the waters from below came up and caused this big, great flood over the entire world. Amazing, amazing. And so it took quite a while for the flood waters to dry up. And then whenever Noah and um, his family Whenever the rain was over, God gave them a promise that he would never flood the entire earth again. So, can you guess what that promise was? I hope you guessed a rainbow. And this comes from Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 through 13. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant. A covenant is a promise. I am making between me and you and every living creature with you. A covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. As we color our coloring sheet, I want you to think of John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Here's a really neat graphic of this. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life.
As we color our letter D in our journal, I want you to think of all of the disciples that Jesus had, and also think of this verse. John 1, 41 and 42. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas which when translated is Peter. All right, let's do some lesson trivia on our Bible lesson. Number one, God asked a man named what to build a giant boat? Noah. Number two, God sent two of every kind of animal to go aboard the ark. Number three, the entire earth was covered in a blank after 40 days of rain. Flood. Number four, Noah sent a blank out of the ark to look for land. Our animal for the night, a dove. Number five, when God makes a blank, we know he will keep it. A promise. So now we're going to do a song that I learned when I was a kid, and it's called Rise and Shine, and it's all about the lesson of Noah and the ark. So here we go. Rise and Shine. below, you need to choose one thing that you will do because of this passage and write it or draw it in the heart. And I put, every time I see a rainbow, I will think of God. So if you're not writing yet, you can maybe draw a rainbow right here. All right, now that we've heard our Bible lesson and studied it, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promises that you have given us. We thank you for the rainbow that we see every time it rains to know that you'll never flood the entire earth again. We also thank you for the promise that we have in salvation in Christ. Lord, we love you and it's in your name we pray. Amen.